Hello there, and thanks so much for finding some time to watch this video. My name is Simon Barrer, uh, Director of Technology here at SOA Software, and I'm here to talk today about an exciting new product called Intermediary for Microsoft. Now, as you know, SOA Software is a gold-certified Microsoft partner, and we have a long history of working with Microsoft and the Microsoft community to offer great solutions for API and SOA management on the Microsoft platform. An intermediary for Microsoft is our latest offering to ensure the very best experience for you in your Microsoft environment. And today I want to talk a little bit about intermediary for Microsoft and how it can help you in your environment. And to do that, I want to start by drawing a picture of what a typical Microsoft environment looks like today and how intermediary for Microsoft can improve that environment and give you a, a, a very high quality SOA and API management solution. So to do that, on the board, I want to start drawing out what that typical Microsoft environment looks like today. So on the right-hand side here, I'm going to draw a typical Microsoft backend. So here, inside of this backend, we're going to have some of the key technologies. So there's our backend. And you can imagine some of the key technologies in the backend. We have things like BizTalk Server. We also have things like WCF to build services. We also have things like Web API. And for security, of course, we have Active Directory. So this gives you an idea of some of the key technologies that you have running in your environment and some of the key technologies that make up a typical Microsoft backend. And of course, we also have the front end, the applications that need to consume these uh, backend resources. So let's draw that on the left here. Okay, so this is essentially our front end, our applications. Okay, and let's start with uh, two applications. Let's start with um, a SharePoint portal. Okay, Microsoft SharePoint, very, very popular portal software, and you know there's a big need for SharePoint portals to expose some of that key enterprise data that's stored in the back end. And why don't we put a second application, let's put a non-Microsoft application, let's how about uh, put a PHP-based website. And I'm choosing PHP here, but uh, it could be other open source packages, could be IBM, could be Oracle, just to show something that's not on the Microsoft platform. And finally, what I want to do is simply draw a couple of lines showing service indications between the front end and the back end. So why don't we say that we have SharePoint going to, let's say, WCF. We have PHP going to BizTalk Server, and let's say we also have PHP going to Web API. All of these calls are, are, are there to pull out important enterprise data, to perform important transactions like to purchase product or to look up customer information or whatever it may be. And essentially we have our, our service indication. So, so far so good. This is a really nice picture. And this is a very powerful picture. You have a services layer, you have an application layer, and you have an integration across the two. However, there are a couple of problems with this approach, and I want to list out some of the key areas uh, where you, you have challenges with an architecture like this, and then I want to talk about how Intermediary from Microsoft can help you with these challenges. So why don't we list out some of the key challenges? So one, one challenge that we have is visibility and monitoring. Okay, so if you look at this picture here, you don't have a lot of visibility into all the different uh, backend services that exist and, and infrastructure that's running. You also don't have good visibility into all the consumers and who's calling who and who has access to, to who. So definitely visibility is a big issue. You also have limitations in terms of monitoring. You don't know how often a particular service is being called, uh, when it's being called, where it gets the most amount of traffic. Is it at lunchtime? Is it at the end of the day? Is it in the morning? Um, so you're missing a lot in terms of visibility. That's one important um, uh, limitation. A second is around security. So you have really no uh, sort of a high level uh, way to say what kind of security everything needs to have here. Some of these transactions may have credit card information. Some of these transactions may have sensitive personal information. You don't have a way to really control. Every back end is going to declare its security. Every front end is going to declare uh, how it wants to talk based upon security. But you don't have a whole lot of control. Okay. Another key area is around interoperability, and this is a really big one. Okay, so this PHP website is not built on the Microsoft platform, and it cannot necessarily talk to the native Microsoft stack, including things like NetTCP, Windows Security, Active Directory, MSMQ, and so on. And so these lines may not even make sense. They may not even be possible. 
right? So definitely PHP has some challenges talking to a Microsoft uh, backend, and so you're going to want to uh, find a way to solve this problem so that really anyone on the front end can talk to anyone on the back end and vice versa. So definitely interoperability is a big issue. And let's throw out one more. One more issue could be uh, evolution of your environment. So as your backend needs to change, perhaps you're going to move BizTalk to another data center. Perhaps you're going to build out a new cluster of WCF servers. You're going to move things around. You have no way to evolve this backend in a way that the front end doesn't get disrupted. Every time you want to make a change here, you worry about what's going to break uh, over here, and you have to put a lot of effort in analyzing your environment and, of course, making the right changes to ensure that that change is actually going to work uh, everywhere else. So evolution is a huge issue. Okay? So that gives you an idea of some of the challenges that you run into in your environment and essentially what you're finding with this particular environment here. So how can Intermediary from Microsoft help this scenario? So let me show you. Intermediary from Microsoft runs in between your front and your back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these existing lines and I'm going to show a slight architectural change that is going to make a big change to your infrastructure. So in red, I'm going to draw a box and this box is intermediary for Microsoft. Exciting new product. And essentially, Intermediary for Microsoft runs on its own. It's independent. It runs on the network. You don't have to install it to your existing infrastructure, either front or back. You don't have to make changes to your infrastructure. It runs independently. And essentially, you're going to route traffic to Intermediary for Microsoft instead of directly to your back end. And Intermediary for Microsoft is very smart. It knows how to then uh, reroute traffic to the back end. So it's the same basic traffic patterns, but it's through intermediary from Microsoft. And with this small architectural change, you're going to realize very large changes in terms of SOA and API management. And let me show you how. Let's go back to the uh, four points that we raised earlier in terms of limitation and talk about how they're no longer limitations now that intermediary from Microsoft is in the picture. The first one is around visibility and monitoring. So with, it, with intermediary from Microsoft, we can actually monitor all traffic patterns coming through. And we can also give you things like metrics, and we can also give you full visibility through a service catalog in terms of what back-end services exist, what front-end consumers exist, who has access rights to call who, so you have full control and full visibility. In terms of security, Intermediary from Microsoft supports all the standard security protocols out there, especially the Microsoft one. So it supports Active Directory natively, it supports Windows security, it can do Kerberos, it can do... Um, uh, ADFS, so all the rich uh, Microsoft security protocols are supported and Intermediary from Microsoft can handle those out of box no problem. Next one is interoperability. PHP now doesn't have to know how to talk to a Microsoft backend because it knows how to talk to Intermediary from Microsoft. Intermediary from Microsoft offers mediation capabilities, so it can actually support a particular type of technology on the front and a different technology on the back. So in this scenario, you can have PHP talking HTTP and basic auth to the front of Intermediary from Microsoft, but Intermediary from Microsoft can talk net TCP and Windows security to the back, and each side does not need to know about the other, and so you can have very nice interoperability across the board. Very, very powerful feature of Intermediary from Microsoft. Last point is evolution. Because Intermediary from Microsoft is now in the picture, you can have very advanced routing, and you can expose service endpoints that can change independently on the front as on the back. So if I want to take my BizTalk server and move it to another data center, no problem. Front end does not need to know about it. If I want to make a change to the way security is done or other aspects of the front end, no problem. Back end does not need to know about it. So I can uh, evolve and refactor my back end any which way I please without having to worry about who's going to break and how much work I have to do in order to make those pieces work. Okay? An intermediary for Microsoft is built on the Microsoft platform for the Microsoft platform, so you know you're getting the same great functionality that Microsoft uses in its own products and that you use when you develop your own applications on the Microsoft platform, so it's a perfect fit for your environment. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what intermediary for Microsoft is all about and how it can help you. Please visit us at www.soa.com and share with us what you're doing in your environment and how we can help. We're going to have a part two uh, of this video, uh, please click on it, where we talk about how you can expose your backend out to the mobile for the mobile revolution. So please do view that. And thanks so much again for your time, and we'll be talking soon. Thank you.